Not these right now. That. Emotiva Air Motive SE12. Hello, baby. So this subwoofer um, should look a little bit familiar to you. I did the S8. And what I liked about the S8 was everything. But this is their SE12, which has the down firing 12 and the front firing 12. So it's very confusing because there's an S12. Emotiva makes an S12 and it's like $700. And they make the little S8. And it's that little one, it's like $300. But the S8 has all those connections that I love. Um, can I lean this on its front? Not really. Uh, uh. But now the SE12 has the connections that I'm talking about. Remember? Just go watch my, my S8 review. The switch that does the RCA pass-through so it'll cut off to the speakers for 60, 80, or 100 hertz. It's got the binding post for high level in. It's got an LFE in or RCA ins. It's got the crossover power, phase adjustment. This is only $400. Uh, oh, God. The cover, by the way, is here. And I know you're asking yourself, Seals, why the fuck are you in your closet? And I'll answer that for you in a second. As soon as I put this back upright where it belongs, you can see there's marks on the floor because it's been here so long. The reason I'm in the closet with this SE12, oh God, broken, is because that's where it sounds best for this room. Uh, if you've never seen me do the sub crawl, I actually did that on Twitch. I was doing a Twitch live stream and I got that sub and I was like, all right, let's hook it up. And one of the biggest problems with, with bass, I'll give you a little quick, a quick side note. I'm not talking about the sub in particular, all subs, is the sub crawl, which is you put, you know where you're going to sit. This is my, this is where I spend most of my nights with Chewbacca right here. And I'll watch whatever random TV show, anime, movie, you name it, is on, or live streamer. Giggity. And so, what I did in that live stream, and I'm sure the clip isn't available, is I took that subwoofer and I put it on top of, did I just put it on the couch? Or did I move this out and put like, basically you put the subwoofer as close to the proximity of where your head is supposed to be as possible. So if you're gonna sit here, and you know you're gonna sit here, you put the subwoofer right there. And then, when you play the subwoofer there, you can't just put it there, to play it, you move your head where you think you want to put the subwoofer. You get down on all hands and knees. That's why it's called the sub crawl. And you crawl around like a dog. And you're like, does it sound best here? Like it's playing right there. Does it sound best here? Does it sound best here? Does it sound best here? It didn't sound bad here. But then, out of sheer desperation for trying to find the best place in this fucking weird room with the high ceilings that I found to place that subwoofer was right there in that wall, in that thing, slightly off the wall. That's it, that's the best spot for it. And when I put it there, and you sit back over here, and we unpause, this is War Druna Uner, U-R-U-R, Urur, from War Druna, from Runajad Ragnarok. Somebody else, please just write that in the comments. Right here is where it sounds amazing. So now I am using Bucard A500s here, by the way. This is not like, like, oh, I just throw some speakers up. And normally, under normal circumstances, I don't have that subwoofer running because I'm trying to assess the A500s and they're like $4,500 for the set with the thing. So I'm like, you know what? Let's not include the $400 budget sub. But now that I am actually like committed to doing this review and I've been listening to it, even $4,500 speakers from Denmark could probably use the benefit of a sub. Now I'm also not using, hold on, I'm gonna just next track this. Oh God. Now, I guess I should take it out of the closet. No, no, screw that. There's literally nothing else to show you. It's a big block, black box, blocks. It isn't that heavy, it's maybe, ugh. 30 pounds 
which is why it's cheaper. Oh God, don't knock that over. Then they're like $700 S12. That's why it's the SE12. And I'm sure it's less powerful, but the reason you buy it is these connections. And the reason I jacked off so hard about the S8 was these connections. Because people have been... See, so I want to put a subwoofer on my desk. How do I make the subwoofer from my desk? And this subwoofer is the answer to that. Now, you have to understand how the signal path is going to work. These uh, RCA cables right now are coming from an SMSL VMVD1, which is my DAC. There are XLR cables going to each one of these book cards. Book cards. And then the RCA cables comes to here. So the volume on the speakers is fixed. It's the same as if I used any powered monitor. In fact, oh God. Oh, these Mac EMR 624s are what I actually had in this room before the book arts. And holy God, I forgot how good they were. And you know, every speaker could kind of use a subwoofer. So these were getting an XLR input and they'll take an RCA or a TRS input, but they were getting an XLR from a remote controllable DAC. And then the RCA was going from that same DAC and remote controlling into this. So the DAC's controlling the volume. I take out the little remote in my pocket, I hit down, we can lower the volume, we can hit next track and it should whisper at us. Very quiet, very gentle, but it's also controlling the output to the subwoofer. So if you wanted to use this subwoofer on a desk setup and not like here in like a living room-ish, it's a faux living room, but what you'd need to do is you'd have to make sure your pre-out, whether it's on a shit Magni or a Mica Origin or I think the IFI Zendak is a pre, or is that a full DAC out? Or is that switchable? I think that's switchable. God, I love the IFI Zendak. What you do is your source, and your source could just be your computer's master volume, honestly. You could go three and a half millimeter to RCA into the sub. You set your switch to cut the base off after it leaves this. So this is the signal coming in. The other RCA that's to the side, rotate. The other RCA that's to the side is your output with an actual physical limiter so that the RCA signal coming in is full, full hertz, everything, all the way. And then this switch, which is fucking rare on a subwoofer, will remove the low end so that your speakers, whether it's the Mackies, LSR 306, NMT5Vs, you know, iLoud micros, don't attempt to do the bass. One of the biggest problems with setting up a 2.1 and having to be sort of makeshift is that, yeah, you want your subwoofer to take over the low end, but the speakers aren't giving it up. Like right now is not the way this should be set up. That should not be XLRs into these. That should be RCA outs into those. You just don't have RCA. I should have switched them out before this review. Fuck it, I love my book arts. So if you feed it full signal, in you flip your switch to determine the size of your speaker how much how much bass do you want to give your speakers because you don't want to take it all away or else it sounds unnatural you don't want to give this thing too much responsibility because positional audio is around 100 hertz and if something is like ooh zoop and it doesn't sound like it's going zoop it sounds like it's going to the sub you're gonna get a little freaked out so that's one way to hook this up you can also it doesn't have to be powered monitors you can go signal source cheap preamp, anything that can control the volume through RCA, RCA in and out, and out. You could use a Emotiva Control Freak if you are the luckiest man on earth and own one of those. You can then go RCA out of this into a speaker amp, like a nugget speaker amp, like a SMSL a DA8S or a Emotiva a Basex A100. As long as you never ever touch that speaker amps volume once it's set and you control the volume like you did for the for the powered monitors you can use this subwoofer for that however well there's another way we could hook this up because that's another way you hook this into a, a power amp like a fucking behringer a, a800 and then you could use passive speakers the other option and again this is getting rarer and rarer on subwoofers is the speaker binding posts here. Now, people get confused and they think that these speaker binding posts, okay, well, Zeos, I only have this small amplifier, 
Will this small amplifier be able to push this subwoofer and the speakers? Stop. These binding posts are not to power the subwoofer. It's self-powered. Here's 110 from the wall. It has its own amplifier built in. What these binding posts do is taste. Mm. Here they go. They taste the signal that you give it and then reamplify it and then becomes low end. So what you would do is you would completely ignore RCA. This is for passive speakers. This would be the way to do this. You get your DA8S, your A100, your power, well, no, you wouldn't get a power amp. The power amp, I guess you could do also if you really felt like it. But you, instead of just going speaker amp speakers, you now go speaker amp sub speakers. Now it's a little difficult because they don't include eight of the binding posts on this. So you have to sort of get creative because ideally what you would have is speaker wires that terminate in the sub, then speaker wires that originate from the sub and then go to your speakers. That'd be nice and neat, nice and clean. And all it would do is pass through. Just go into one end, come out the other end. It's not actually fucking with the power you're sending it at all. It's just tasting it. But with only one set of connectors like this subwoofer has, that's gonna involve you getting a little bit creative. You either have to go, well, what you have to do is go either from the amplifier into the five-way binding post and then back out to the speaker four times because you gotta go negative for the right, the negative for the right, you gotta go here and then out, or run your normal mica uh, speaker cables, which I will link in the description, from your amp to your speakers, and then either on the speaker terminals or the amplifier terminals, put very small lightweight light gauge wire also in there. So you got the, the banana plugs, you plug them in the back, you unscrew the thing, and you put the little wire in the little hole, the little annoying way to hook up a speaker. You know how I don't fucking do it anymore, it's annoying. You know when you do this? Oh, there's got a hole in it. So what you can do is you could just run four very narrow skinny wires. They don't have to take any power, it's just to take signal and go from your speaker amp down to the subwoofer. You screw in your four little skinny wires. You have your four little skinny wires screwed into the back of your amplifier. And that will automatically let your speaker amplifier tell the subwoofer what to do. And then you just take your speaker amplifier and plug your banana plugs into it, plug it into your speakers, and you're done. Then your volume control on your speaker amplifier then controls the signal that's going to this and your speakers, and then you're done. So it's an option, it's a pain in the ass option because they've only given you um, four instead of eight of these. Eight would be so much neater. It would just be high in, low out, high in, low out, in, out, in, out. Now it's in and out in one terminal or jumping around. You're gonna have to do some fancy footwork. The RCA option I like a lot because you do get this switch. What I just described does not do what this switch does. So using it for passive amplifier, for passive speakers, means you're gonna still send full range to whatever speaker you're powering with your amplifier. Then you just get this subwoofer and blend it in. Wherever the natural cutoff is of your passive speaker, you just blend in with the, the knobs here. With the RCA, you physically cut off its ability to get that signal, which is why with uh, what I just said earlier, which is like send the signal in, then send the signal out to your amp, would be able to cut off those frequencies. So your speakers would be able to be cut off and not, you wouldn't have 55 Hertz coming out of this speaker and 55 Hertz coming out of the subwoofer, which could make it, you know, you have two things doing, it gets boomy. So the RCA connection is the God connection on this. That's the one you want to use. This one can work if you have a volume knob in your amp and you just want to keep it like that. But I would highly recommend you fix your amplifier's volume, your speaker amp's volume, Use the RCA ins and do a preamp to control it or a DAC to control it. Um, I took it out of its happy spot. I should probably demonstrate it more. I did a lot of talking. Someone on my uh, car wash video, if you didn't see, I made a, a video where I washed my car. I was like, should I start a car wash channel? And someone was like, less speaky, more dewy. And I'm like, do you even know who the fuck I am? I don't have to do anything. I just can talk for eight hours at a time and people will be like, oh my God, that's fascinating. I'm lucky I even got the car washed in two hours. All right, so let's go back with this. We'll plug in the signal first, which doesn't matter left or right because it's a mono subwoofer. 
and I'll plug this in second. The red light will turn green. I will cut a remote out of my pants. Where's my pants? There's no remote in my pants. The remote's here. We're gonna hit show oh, next track. So that's Dead Mouse. It's really quiet. All right, you know what? There. I don't want to get copyright pulled. I'm gonna get copyright pulled. So now there's no speakers. Now it's just subwoofer, which is. Okay, lower that. All my blinds and shit are rattling. Probably. There's a lot of low end coming out of that closet. Next track. Pearl Jam, no. Next track. Frankie goes to Hollywood. See, like just that, that bang. Perfect for that subwoofer. Acid 8000 from Fatboy Slim. Honestly, not a lot of uh, low end for that. I think that's just shit in my closet. Oh yeah, no, oh. Glass animals. Oh yeah, that's shaking. Okay, um, I may need to um, lower that. You see, that's another thing. The speakers sort of keep you at the right volume. When you mute the speakers, you're like, I don't hear the sub. Oh my God, turn it up. I don't know how good copyright uh, matches are on YouTube, if it's gonna pick up just like 60 Hertz and below, but $400 for that. Even if it was a mediocre performer, which it's not, just for the hookup options for a 12 inch is a must buy. It's a must buy. People have bought the S8 and they're like, man, I wish I made the 12 inch version with all these hookup options. Ta-da. So there you go. I don't have to do anything else. This video is, this video made itself and I, I could have made this video a month ago, but I completely just, it just lived, I just lived with it. My whole life was just like, yeah, whatever. Sub is just doing its thing. Sub is just gonna do sub things. Now I'm gonna get copyright again. So I'm gonna put these back on. Although they take a long while to turn on. They take like nine solid seconds, which we gotta talk about that in that review, which I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do in the basement. Oh yeah. <sighs> Base presence is a thing. Actually, I wonder if the pillows being stacked in there are helping or hurting. Put more pillows in the closet. Yeah, eventually the glass animals poster will go somewhere. So, um, yeah, thank you, Mativa, for sending me the SE12. Thank you for making it. Because, you know, honestly, it's been a long enough time. They probably just went, hey, can we build this for cheaper and put all these features on it? And they're like, yes. So sweet. Maybe they listen to us as a group. Um, that wallpaper, which is uh, Panty and Stocking, which I, have, well, which I have not seen all of it yet, available in the description. I'll link to the boot carts, which you're not gonna find. Not a lot of people are gonna buy these boot carts at uh, their current price. Definitely linking to that. Um, check out the Patreon and the Subscribe Star. Two ways to support this channel. Uh, five dollars a month lets you ask me any questions you want on platform, participate in the yard sales, and see these reviews early. And the ten dollar tier. I don't know what the ten dollar tier is. My right arm. $10 tier gets you the behind the scenes private telegram chat where they know I've had this sub forever. And if you ever want to ask me a question about anything you know I have, anything you see on an unboxing channel, and that shows up in like the behind the scenes pictures, just ask. It's just, I am, it's your window to weight gain. Wait, that's a Simpsons line. It's your window to knowledge. Anything you want to know about, I'll tell you because you're paying me to tell you. So, and you also get to meet a whole lot of other crazy uh, people. A lot of crazy people. I love it. I love having crazy audio people, but not like the bad kind of audio crazy. You know, that's another reason why Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guides Forum came about, is to try to educate people or keep them from getting crazy. Because I need to have my finger over the nuke button. 
If it ever gets too, too much like other forums on the internet, I'm just gonna nuke it. Alright. I can't, I can't, I can't. It's gonna get, I'm gonna get fucking pulled. I know I'm gonna get pulled. And this is, this is Bulldog Anthem from Carolyn Tuesday. And it's amazing, and I can't play it because YouTube doesn't have strong enough lawyers. <laughs> So I'm going to leave it on that. Goodbye, everyone. Oh.